Well, for seven or eight years, uh, Grand River Community Health Center um, uh, has been working with the seasonal agricultural workers. Uh, we thought it was a perfect fit to the mandate of CHCs. Uh, these folks face all sorts of barriers in accessing uh, care. Uh, and we launched. So we've been involved with the Grand River um, CHC for many years now. Um, there are a lot of inequities that are there and for us to be able to provide um, really good primary care we needed to be able to think out of the box and start reaching out and providing different ways to provide services to these employers and to their workers. And uh, what we've done for the last seven years or so that uh, allowed us to be successful is we're, we're running clinics where the workers are regardless, where they travel on a Friday night for groceries or, or a money transfer. Of course, uh, the pandemic threw a big uh, a wrench in that uh, work and we had to pivot uh, to a virtual model uh, and we're also doing a more outreach to the larger farms. So this year, the Grand River CHC and um, the Dell or the family health team really worked together to look at how we were going to bring care to them. So we started the on-site uh, primary care clinics and that brings healthcare right directly to the farm, reduces a number of barriers. It enables trust because we're meeting them on their on their turf, right, in their area. Uh, we work, uh, again, with the Norfolk Family Health Team. During pandemic, we worked with a couple of the uh, health units. We work with the faith community. There's some grassroots uh, worker advocacy groups. And, and we all share the same message. We, we have the same uh, mission. And I think people get to know us, uh, those partners get to know us, and uh, I, I think it engenders uh, trust and that trust uh, then is also felt by the workers. We know in our community that transportation is one of the biggest issues along with cultural sensitivity and um, so one of the things that our, our program does is to be able to reduce the barrier for transportation. And the whole business is about um, meeting, at, meeting the workers where they at, where they're at, both figuratively and literally. Like we, work, we, we meet them at the farms or we meet them at the grocery store. Uh, that is a huge benefit uh, around the issue of uh, improving uh, access and, of course, uh, figuratively, too. We, we appreciate their apprehension. Uh, we appreciate that they're worried about uh, disclosing illness to their, um, uh, to their employer. Um, of course, there's a language barrier, uh, so we need translators uh, in place. Uh, there's a barrier around culture. Um, we do uh, health fairs. Uh, some groups organize uh, some sporting events that tap into culture. And of course, uh, culturally uh, sensitive foods are always uh, a drawing card uh, for uh, uh, the clients too. They're in a strange country. They don't have family. They don't speak the language. And then all of a sudden when you have you know, the interpreter and the nurse and, and a person who's scared, all of a sudden talking about back home and talking about horses and talking and sharing stories of their lives, it, it brings a whole new dimension of what we're doing. And I think that's the rewarding piece of this too, right? Is getting, not just providing the medical, but providing a safe place for some of these guys to land and to talk to about just their fears.